soul and stayed in the side of the Amen. This is what you look like in the spirit. Amen. You are, and that thing is going to stay there until the rapture. You, this is what you look like in the spirit. You're covered. I said you're covered. I said you're covered. Come on, you don't believe it. I said you're covered. I don't care what the devil said. You're covered. Glory to God. And the enemy can't see you. Amen. And the enemy can't see you. Amen. And the enemy can't see you. Amen. And ain't nothing he can do about it. Yes, You're wearing the armor of God. Amen. Glory to God. This morning I want us to walk this word of God. Amen. I want to go to Romans 8. This morning. And I want to talk about the trap of self pity. deliverance house. Amen. And we believe in deliverance. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We believe in the casting out of devils. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because, and we, we know this, that our, the flesh, uh, there's no good thing that dwells in the flesh. Amen. But we, and I'm going to just say this and I'm going to leave it on my hot off this one. Hallelujah. Amen. But we've just come through a season of, uh, you know, of Halloween where people were you know, celebrating, amen, dressing up, amen, churches was dressing up, celebrating, amen, witchcraft, and God is not pleased, amen, we need to repent, hallelujah, um, why, how do some people introduce their children to witchcraft this year, and brought it in the church, dressed them up, dressed them up as monsters, and Demons, all those things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then wonder why they struggle. Uh -huh. Come on, hallelujah. I'm, cause I, I'm a saint. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to just go participate in it. The devil's a lie. Uh -huh. Come on, hallelujah. We got to come out from among them and be separate. I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm just going to give my. Uh, the saints of God should find themselves, especially in. This house, because this is a deliverance house. Amen. We fight the devil, and you put the devil off. Uh -oh. oh, she's just a cute little witch. All right, when she start flying around the room, come on, hallelujah! In rebellion, don't call me. Come on, hallelujah! Amen. But we need to repent as a church. We're gonna we're gonna repent right now. We need to repent as a church for coming in covenant with the occult. And then trying to solidify it in the name of, we need to give them an alternative. No, hallelujah, it's just another day. Yeah. Come on, we don't need a hallelujah party yet either. Right. Come on, hallelujah. No, we need to be up in the house. Of, come on, hallelujah. We, we treat it like another day. Because I don't want the devil to get no honor. Amen. Come on, matter of fact, I'm, we going to ban candy. <laughs> we buying them candy demons. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, some of y'all got diabetes now. Come on, hallelujah. 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 Amen. Holiness is still right. And we want to walk in such a way. We don't, we're not like the world. We're not trying to be like the world. We're not trying to be like the world. Come on, hallelujah. We want to live for God. And they you're just too radical. Come on, hallelujah. I have to be radical. Because it, and do you know how much it took for you to get free? The hell you had to go through, the stuff you had to deal with, the people you had to forgive to then open the door to the occult realm and allow the enemy to come in in the name of a holiday? Come on, how much do you love God? And this is, a, this is not condemnation. I hope you see, because I don't feel the condemnation on me. Hallelujah. This is love. That we're coming up into another level because when you know better, you do better. Yes. Hallelujah. So, so we want to do better. And, and, and yesterday, I bound up everything when we were on the when we were praying. I bound up everything that was thought it would move. Come on, Hallelujah. Come on, every witch, all the the animal sacrifice, human sacrifice, all the you know. Uh, this was such a a, a day. 
of witchcraft. It was not only a Halloween, but it was a full moon, and we know how that uh, how the occult realm handles the the full moon, and they're on a lunar cycle, and and the witches get together and they release their curses on the full moons. And, and but not only that, it was a blue moon and a hundred. It was all these different uh, 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 all this astrology that lined up in this year, in this election year. And there is a lot of witchcraft that's going forth. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and church, hey man, I'm going to get up on because I'm going to go to the little rant, but I'm not going to rant. I'm just telling us we're going to follow for this morning in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father, we repent on the behalf of the remnant, the kingdom people, God, that have come to God and the beholden God. Yea, that the behold God. We don't want them to be condemned, God, but convict them, Holy Ghost. And convict us, God, if we have any open doors to the occult realm. Father, yea, that the behold say, even on our children and our children's children, Father, even as some of them, oh, the behold say, take dressed up, oh, 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 see it, and I command every spirit of what loose me now in the name of Jesus. Father, and we just and boho, we just ask for your forgiveness this morning, God. On the on behalf of the trunk or treats, God, on the behalf of the children going out trick-or-treating, Father, those that are, are involved in all that fear-based stuff. Father, you told us you you have not given us a spirit of fear, God. And I thank you, our children are covered. And I bind up every, oh, I bind up witchcrafts right now in the name of Jesus. Every warlock, every sorcerer, every diviner in the name of Jesus, I speak to you now. And I release my warring angels to go forth, to go forth into battle, in this region, in the name of Jesus. And I drive out every curse, every hex and vex that has been loosed over this region. I bind it up and I call it null and void. All the animal sacrifice, I call it null and void in the name of Jesus. It has no power in Jesus. The double will shake and I bind it up even in the name of fun. I bind that up in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, thank God. Thank God. Amen. Come on, thank God.
going to deal with the world, and you're going to deal with the flesh. You're going to deal with the devil, we can cast him out. You're going to deal with the world, we have to love him. And you're going to deal with the flesh, we have to crucify you. God help me this morning. Who is he that can redeem? It is Christ that hath died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Even at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. If God be for us, Jesus himself foreclosure separate me shall the family rejection separate me shall my brother that hates me separate me from this come on read or distress this word distress here speak this this tribulation speaks of a test in the physical realm of persecution. But this word distress in the Greek denotes an emotional stress. Anybody? 
somebody been under emotional stress. It speaks to the pressure of a psyche that is being pressed to the point of breaking. Shall depression, shall anxiety, shall the fear of this world pressure you to the point that I don't want to be with you? Shall what people say about me? This distress is not only speaks of that, but it speaks of a self-image. When you've been damaged in your childhood, when you've been abused and you've been battered and your self-image gets damaged, I'm not talking about pride, but I'm talking about the way you see you gets damaged. It brings a distress on the emotional man because you were designed to walk in every aspect of your life in total victory, but when you are under distress, you can't handle things how you Some of us have lived up under so much stress for so long we don't know what peace feels like. We don't know what it's like to wake up with a sound mind. Wake up worried. Wake up lonely. Wake up bogged down and heavy. Lacking joy and lacking the peace of God. Shall this separate me? Now let me, let's talk about Paul for a minute so we can get an understanding of Paul. Paul was a man, the scripture said, was a Pharisee of Pharisees. When he was a young man, Paul was sent away to be taught. He did not grow up under the nurturing of a father and a mother. But he was sent into schooling and training. This is where we get that Paul's, when you read the doctrine of Paul, Paul's teaching is very hard. And, and where he came from, it shows up in his teaching. He's a strong man. He's a harsh man because of what he had to go through. He's a man that knew what rejection was like. To be rejected. To reject other people. To eventually reject yourself. We, but we see it so that Paul said, I'm least. He that wrote over all half of, of the New Testament. He said, I'm least. What he went through yeah. caused him to see in another light. Yeah. What I'm telling you this morning is what you're going through is just a part. Shall tribulation, shall distress, come on, let's read. Or persecution. Shall persecution. They will deliver you up. David says this. He says, it is not me. It is, it is they that hate me. Look at all that. I can, I can handle the folks down the street that didn't like me. That, 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 didn't, that, that hated on me. That, that hated on me. It's not me. It, it wasn't it wasn't those, but it was the people that were supposed to come. Yeah. <laughs> those that were supposed to love me. The people that were supposed to push me. The people that were supposed to provide for me. They ignored me. I was persecuted. Some of you were persecuted as children. tribulation. I've been homeless. 
Matter of fact, I have a knife in my back right now. Shatari o I've been tired to the point that I was delusional, but it didn't stop God. He said unto you this morning, if nothing you've been through, nothing you're going through, nothing you're walking through can stop the prayers of Jesus. You should be running around this room right now just to get a revelation that Jesus himself, the greatest prayer that has ever stepped foot in the earth, said, I'm going to pray on Gwen's behalf. He's never, he's never not had a prayer test. He doesn't have a list of prayers that have not been answered yet. You won't die. <laughs> You've lived through much. Come on, you on Facebook. You lived through much, but you can't die. Some people have never been hungry. I'm not talking about going on a fast, but I'm talking about when you've been forced to fast. When you didn't have money to just go and buy what you wanted to buy. See, hungry people are not picky. Have you walked? Have you walked through nakedness where you didn't have no clothes on your back? Everything you got, somebody had to give it to you. Come on. That's what he's talking about. Come on, read. Or peril. Uh -huh. Or sword. Pestilence, sickness, murder. What happens when death? strange when the devil no he can't do anything to you but he'll try to come through your children yeah, come on. Yeah. he'll try to come through those you love and whenever you have to walk through people dying yeah. people that you love dying and you know there's nothing you can do about it come on. how many of y'all are talking to me this morning what to the pestilence? What shall we say to the distress, the emotional pressure that God be doing? If God be doing it, I'm not telling you everything's going to be easy. 
I'm telling you, in God we pour. I'm not telling you that it's going to be a bed of roses. I'm telling you, in God we pour. I'm not telling you, you'll never have to walk through anything. You'll never go through any destruction. But if God be he's more. I say he's more than the world can show. How can you minister to a people that are broken if you've never been broken? How can you preach to those that are in addiction if you've never battled a demon of addiction? How can you minister to them that have been raped and molested if you have never walked through anything? You say, God, use me. And then hell hits your life. I thought, I thought, I had a yes, God. I told you yes. Why am I going through this? You got to know what it's like to be lonely and God to be your comforter. If you want God to use you, you got to know what it's like to be sick and God step in and heal your sick body. I say to you this morning, if God be for you, and I'm telling you this morning, if the devil wants to trap you, there is a temptation that comes when you walk through trouble. When you walk through trouble, a lot of times, self-pity. The little thing, I see it every day, that comes in. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody truly understands. Nobody has walked what you've walked. They don't know what it's like to be depressed. They don't know what it's like to be down. Y'all can relate. The one thing the Lord showed me about the self pity, it, it is a rehearsing demon. I'm going to give you what the definition of self pity. I want you to see I'm not taking away from your struggle this morning. Because you got a struggle. You've been through. But you're back. You've been abused. But I say today, oh God, you're not staying there. You've been broke. Didn't have a nickel to rub together. your mind. You hallucinated. You began to see things and hear things that weren't even there. It thought you were crazy and it wasn't that you were crazy. It's that you lived up under so much pressure and the devil threw everything he thought he could throw at you to break you down and get you to leave God. In a tone, you didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. And somebody said, but I can't leave. I feel the anointing this morning. I hear the song say, the ants go marching one by one. Hoorah. Hoorah. Those that have been abused and molested by the enemy you're coming out. And I'm making a decree this morning. You're coming out. One by one. I don't care what the devil has done to you. You're coming out. Sometimes the pressure can get so heavy that you can't even see the light at the end of the tunnel. You can't even see a way through it. You feel like you're drowning.
be dismayed. Don't be disheartened. Because Jesus has been through more than you could ever handle. I know you've been despised by men. No one wants to be unknown. No one wants to walk in a realm. of self-pity is excessive and it's excessive self-absorbed unhappiness over one's troubles. See, when you go through trials, the enemy wants you to rehearse your trouble. He wants you to talk about it over and over and over again. Every morning you get up, you see, when you're really going through a trial, and you're full, and you're hurt, and you're wounded, and you don't have nobody, you just want to talk to somebody. I got to tell somebody. It's, it's too much for me to handle by myself. I just got to tell somebody. But you don't realize every time you rehearse it, you strengthen trouble. You strengthen the theme of trials and tribulations. Hear my word this morning. You can live. See, self-pity is a trapping demon. The Lord said that to somebody. He said, because what I, the, the spirit wants you to do is talk about it. Meditate on what has happened. Think about it. Talk about it. Share it with people. Because there's a man thinking in his heart. So now you begin to multiply your trouble. It grows every time you talk about it. It gets deeper. It traps you. The Lord said, my people can't get free because they live in self-pity. And that spirit will not allow them to leave. It traps them in a cycle of trouble. It will not allow them to go into their next season because they live in their wounds. Come on, help me. Come on, somebody say, help me and heal the Lord. They live in what I couldn't do. I can't do what they did, what she said. But their focus is not Jesus. Whenever you're focused on your trouble, you cannot be focused on Jesus. What doesn't make sense is whenever Jesus, Peter saw Jesus walking and thought he was a ghost, he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. And Jesus said, come. Peter walks on the water. We know a storm arises. Peter takes his focus off of Jesus and he begins to sink. Trouble is such a thing that it has to convince you it's real. But I'm telling you, it's an illusion. The sickness that's trying to hit your body wants you to agree with it so you can set in. The persecution, the betrayal, all that you're going through, it wants you to agree with it and have pity in it and pity yourself. So and when you pity yourself and you begin to feel bad about yourself and sorry for yourself, you will live there. But you got to say, I don't care what I'm going through. Your love of the whole see, I, I don't care what the devil's trying to do. What shall I say to these things? What shall I say? To the things of the, the, the person that raped me. What, what do I say to the person that wounded my heart? What do I say of those that have robbed me and stabbed me in the back? What do I say to them? Thank God. He knows. How can you ignore him? Who shall I talk about? Tell me what can stand before you. Today is pop the balloon. Put away the cake. Take off the hat. The party is over. It's time. It's time to.
it. It's time for you to see all of your seed born again. It's time for you to take all your health back. It's time for you to take your money back. It's time for you to take your marriage back. It's time for you to take your life back. It's time for you to take your job for the holy. It's time for you to take your joy back. Everywhere. I've tried every doctor. Twelve years. I won't do this. I'm worse now than I've ever been in my life. I don't have no more strength. Y'all told me he's still. you get into, I'm not asking you to heal me. I'm not asking you to come down and touch me. I'm going to come where you are. You don't have to say nothing to me. But in the presence of Jehovah, when I get in your presence, God, everything I I got, to, I got to get it together, Jesus, because, because I, I have to handle this situation. Thank you. 
put your people to work. Father said, not my people. Yes, my people. No, I have to find them. They're doing everything they can not to get back into the anxiety and depression medication. They're doing everything they can not to go back. He said, when he comes to the camp to deliver, this is Deuteronomy 23 and 10. He said, when he comes, 12, when he comes to your camp to deliver you and there's a wicked thing, he will turn away. What I'm telling you this morning, bury the wicked thing. Bury the self-pity. No more excuses. I don't care what people have done to you. Let me, let me rephrase that. It's not that I don't care. You can't stay there. You have You can't stay here. You must. You must go and do everything that I've told you to. This morning, come on, stand on your feet. 